questions, uh, you can you can uh, ask ask uh, I mean, as many questions you want. We'll be able to try to answer all of those. And of course, part of that is how this either of his working, he's working through a PNDB. I'm, I'm very open to after to, to uh, if there is a need to discuss about that and how that flies and, and how we, we reach those those results. So feel free to just write your questions during the intervention of the term uh, Nazmi and Operatif, and uh, we'll collect those as far as the the, um, the webinar goes on and try to, to answer those. So basically, um, uh, we are very happy today to have uh, Dr. Mazuri and Dr. Latif presenting two different presentations. And meanwhile, we're going to have a really an inter interaction session. And of course, again, feel free to ask questions and we try to make our best to handle those. Just in terms of uh, introduction for uh, Dr. Mazuri and Dr. Latif. Um, so Professor Mazuri is a, is a consultant eye surgeon that I met in Lahore, Pakistan, uh, three years ago, I, I remember that. He is yeah. the head of the ophthalmology department at uh, Central Park Medical College and WAPDA Teaching Hospital uh, Complex in Lahore, Pakistan. That's WAPDA. I'm sorry? WAPDA. It's known uh, as WAPDA. I was hesitating between the acronym and just the... <laughs> no issues. No issues. That, that's easy. <laughs> You're also the, the chief uh, uh, consultant of the Accurity Eye Center. And Professor Mazuri is a member of the American Academy of Ophthalmology, European Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery, and uh, World Society of Pediatric Ophthalmology, uh, just to name a few, sure. Um, Dr. Latif, Professor Latif, is the head of the ophthalmology department at uh, Kate S. Azam Medical College in uh, Baba Warpur. Did I get that right? Hopefully. Um, he is a certified trainer and examiner, uh, convener at the FCPS2 Ophthalmology of College of Physician Surgeon in Pakistan and has trained more than uh, 100 eye specialists. Professor Latif specializes in cataract and refractive surgery and oculoplastics and has introduced many techniques in cataract and ptosis uh, surgeries. So having said that, uh, I'm handing over to uh, Professor Mazuri to start uh, and share the screen uh, to get the first presentation. Thank you, Max. Let me share my screen. And thank you again for nice introduction and nice words from your side. And uh, we are here with uh, an exciting webinar on the novel concept of EDO, that is Extended Depth of Focus. And uh, as mentioned by Max, we have divided the discussion in two presentations, followed by Q&A session of 10 minutes each. And in the first presentation, I'm going to discuss the concepts of bi, tri, multi and pan focality, neuroadaptation and how does EDOF helps to attain multifocality. And in the second part, I'll be discussing my own experience and videos with Lucidus intraocular lens implantation and its results. And uh, we, I always start my presentation with the recitation from Holy Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kaifa takfuruna billahi wa kuntum amwatan fa'ahiyakum summa yumitukum summa yuhyikum summa ilayhi turja'oon. How can you disbelieve in Allah when you were lifeless? He brought you to the life. And then he will cause you to die. Then he will bring you back to life. And then to him you will be returned. And uh, my own presentation and uh, input about FACO cataract is available at wofa.org course category length and cataract and FACO. And uh, during the presentation, I'll be giving you little glimpses of my poetry. I write in Urdu and we have translated an Urdu poem, Asare Mohabbat, with the name of Mystery of Love. And after every section, you will have one stanza for change of taste. The agenda for today's discussion is 
I have divided the discussion into five sections. The first one is the concept of lower and higher order abrasions and asphericity. Then we will be discussing the neuroadaptation and its relationship to dysphytopsias and focality of IULs. By then it will be followed by discussion on bi, tri, multi, progressive focality, pan focality and EDOF. And then we will be looking into details how does EDOF helps to attain multifocality and what is instant focus technology. And the final section of this presentation will be patient selection and counseling and that will be taken up by the by Professor Ejaz Latif at the end of the discussion. So here we come to the first section. Now, transparency of ocular media is very important and then even if it is transparent there are certain abrasions whenever we talk of about an optical system. There are lower order abrasions we all know very well and we all know very well how to deal with them that is myopia, hyperopia and astigmatism. Myopia and hyperopia are taken care of by accurate biometries and astigmatism is taken care of recently by toric IULs. Whereas higher, higher order abrasions are the spherical abrasions like comma trifile and they are largely dependent on the pupil size. Then they give rise to hazy night vision, loss of contrast, halos and around the bright light sources. So these are the higher order abrasions and once we talk about the eyes optical system, we have to take care of the lower order abrasions and higher order abrasions to give patient a good visual experience post-operatively. Lower order abrasions are about 90% of the population they are there and the higher order abrasions uh, contribute 10% of the uh, this incidence. And there is the concept of spherical abrasions. There is paraaxial ray uh, parallel to the principal axis and it comes to focus at a paraaxial focus like this and once from periphery of the lens this ray is focused in front of the paraaxial focus this is positive spherical abrasion and if this ray is focused behind the paraaxial focus it is negative spherical abrasion so here is a paraaxial focus the ray focusing in front and ray focusing in behind, behind. It gives rise to a little confusion and distortion, but we need to grasp the concept of depth of focus right from here. This range is depth of focus as we will see in later slides from positive spherical abrasion and negative spherical abrasion along with fine sharp focus. And what we did was with the introduction of aspheric IULs, by modifying the curvature of the intraocular lens of the periphery, peripheral part of the intraocular lens, we brought all the rays to a point focus. So by sacrificing the depth of focus, we gave a monofocal sharp focus to the patient. That was the introduction of aspheric IULs. But the centration became very important. And then a little touch, this is a very important function once we start analyzing the intraocular lenses in terms of this photopsias, that is point spread function. It describes the response of an imaging or an optical system to a point source or a point object and the result may be a very sharp point or distortions like this. And this is how the lenses are graded by modulation transfer function which is based on point spread function. A good quality lens will produce the gratings as of the as clear as object. Then there is fair quality lens and then there is poor quality lens. And the concept of depth of focus as I mentioned earlier in once you see the spherical abrasions here you see there is a lens which is focused on a distant object and 
it is for example it is an aspheric lens so it has no option for near vision or intermediate vision so depth of focus is lost so if we are able to design a lens or like uh, the accommodation plays the role in natural eye the near intermediate and the far both are all are in focus then we say this is depth of vision or depth of focus so that ends the first session and as i mentioned here is mystery of love this is how one loves like you sits softly on the green and the flowers during cold winter nights that's how it goes this is how one loves so very soft concept of love is here in mystery of love so we come to the second section that is neuroadaptation and its relationship to dysphotapsias and focality of the iuls see the first neuroadaptation i think a man experiences right after birth see the the image perceived by the eye is upside down and the child starts crying the brain immediately corrects it so that's the first ep ep episode of neuroadaptation occurring right after birth because the child is seeing the seeing the world upside down and the brain is correcting this with neuroadaptation so neuroadaptation is a sensory adaptation a gradual decrease over time in the responsiveness of the sensory system to a continu continuous stimulus and very philosophical and interesting experiments have been done about visual neuroadaptation a psychologist george stratton conducted experiments by wearing reversing glasses for 21 hours in first experiment and for a week or so in second experiment and ultimately he was able to see the erect image again so that's the flexibility of the human mind and that's a flexibility which actually helps even with monofocal iuls even with simple spherical iuls that's our friend which ultimately adopts and with the help of the brain the patient is able to see with the any lens which we implant light and dark adaptation is another example of neuroadaptation and spouse adaptation is between the spouse husband and wife that is also very important so why neuroadaptation differs in different iuls because retina is the first screen or the photoreceptors are there to receive the image the better image the retina will receive in terms of two dimensions that is light and intensity the image is conducted to the brain because the retina has perceived a crisp image with less distortions less dysphotopsias the brain has to do less work less neuroadaptation and thus better clarity so the optics of the iul are very crucial in terms of crispness of the image and the side effects like dysphotopsia should be minimized so that's the focus of all the modern iul industry to decrease the problems with intermediate and near vision and better give the patient better to draw sensitivity we have to decrease the halos and glare and then there is vaseline and vexivian and we have to take care of the astigmatism as well dysphotopsia means an unwanted image that the patient see after cataract surgery positive dysphotopsia is unwanted light such as a streak or a starburst flicker fog or haze negative photopsia dysphotopsia is a black line or a crescent in the far periphery of the lens these are the different dysphotopic phenomena glare halo flare starburst flash streak this is how one loves like a beautiful bird fly on a colorful morning circles around the flower that's how it goes we come to the section 3 by tri multifocality and edof you see the monofocal lenses are there with single focus then came the bifocal lenses 
and the really now the focus is on trifocality and then the, there is a length available with the name of panfocal and then comes the edof refractive lenses have been discontinued because of their dysphraxia and associated issues and diffractive lenses are there in the market like bifocal lenses acrisoft restore and technis trifocal lenses fine v and atlisa and ray one then the elcon has got pan optics and recently medican tour has come with uh trifocal liberty and symphony lens is also there and there are various companies are coming with the edof technology as well but problem with as you here are the examples of these trifocal lenses you see all of them have got rings and steps and these rings and steps lead to ultimately some loss of light and dysphotopsia which gives rise to reduced depth of focus light energy is unevenly distributed loss of contrast sensitivity and dysphotopsia a dove design is a novel concept which by inducing spherical abrasion or like pndb by introducing an a, a spherical button in the center of the lens in confers the depth of focus to the lens as you can see this is a novel concept of savial by introducing an aspheric button in the center of the lens pndb beam is provided which is pseudo non refract non refracting beam which provides the depth of focus for near to intermediate range to the patient and it's unique with savial and it gives the patient the more characteristic about this pndb and depth of focus with savials is that it is aimed at near and intermediate vision then there is a concept of con continuum of foci by controlled introduction of spherical abrasion by cf and we are still far from creating a perfect multifocal iul so how does edof helps to attain multifocality see it is a monofocal lens only single focus then there is trifocal lens but there are gaps left which trouble the patient in the end and what does edof do it by extending the depth of focus it gives patient wider spectrum and freedom for near to intermediate vision in case of lucid iul like this here you see this is the range of clear vision or focus to the patient provided by this concept of edof and as you see in normal diffraction beam the beam comes to focus and then diverges whereas in this patented unique concept of pseudo non diffracting beam by controlled introduction of aspherosity you don't let the beam cross and you make it travel in such a fashion that there is a continuum of clear focus which provides the depth of focus or the range of clear vision to the patient that is pndb instant focus is a unique optical technology designed to replicate the accommodator function of the natural lens and that is introduced by savial and uh, pseudo non diffracting beam we have already discussed and here you can see again a wave front is here there is an aspherical button and here is the construction of the pseudo non diffracting beam that is pndb giving rise to extended depth of focus and this is an animated concept of the same extended depth of focus by pndb pseudo non diffracting beam it is passing and a range of clear foci or the depth of focus is provided to the patient 
so they ultimately this leads to continuous vn from near to intermediate and the gap is between distant and near vn is reduced it allows the patient to receive a full spectrum of vn in vivo analysis of multifocal and edof technology iol was performed by david j apple and he reported better range and depth of focus with edof iols as compared to diffractive trifocal iols and at the same time with this photopsia simulator the researchers reported that lesser dysphotopsia was noticed with edof iols as compared to diffractive trifocal iols and with this we end our section and move to the next section and uh, next section is patient selection and counseling and this part of the discussion is going to be taken up by professor ijaz latif and i am going to skip these slides but before ending the discussion of this part 1 here is the stanza of the mystery of love this is how one loves dear mazhari sahib love ain't done love just happens that's how it goes this is how one loves thank you for your attention